Welcome back to HowToAV.TV. We're over at an incredibly busy ISC 2023 over in Barcelona. And my goodness, from day one, it is really, really busy. What does that say to me? It says that there's a real hunger for people to get out of their living rooms, back into the working world. And that's just why we're here on the Polystand today to talk to Sof Socrates about that culture for back to work, for hybrid working, and how do we get people back into the office? Sof, thank you for joining us at How to AV. Let's talk about where we are now then. And we can see today that there are so many people out and about, there really is that hunger for people to now get back out of the house. But I am hearing that there is still a reticence for some employees to be leaving the house and coming back into the office. There's just been research that says that nearly all managers will prefer for every single one of their staff to be back in the building. So what's the facts? What's the reality right now? Yeah, um, brilliant. So you're right. It's absolutely heaving here today. Incredible how many people have turned up. Um, we've seen the transition happening over the last 12 to 18 months. So initially, and we did actually conduct um, a survey about 18 months ago to understand from an employee perspective, what's your thoughts about going back to the office? Are you willing? Are you keen? Is there anything you miss about the office? And of course, from a hybrid work solutions perspective, a lot of employees and people said, actually, I've either worked from home. I don't look forward to the commute, getting back to the office. I'm a little bit concerned about the noise rage when I get to the office and everyone's talking and I just want to focus. Um, but they did also miss a few things such as the camaraderie. They missed the collaboration. They miss seeing people, socializing with people and learning from people. So there was a balance to be seen actually around 18 months ago. As employers have tried to get employees back into the office and ask them, of course, they tried to set up the come along, we'll provide lunch. And that initially is good as a first time, but that's going to wear thin over time. So you need a little bit more on that from a culture perspective. And those benefits in the office have become a real key issue. Every company has been really struggling to recruit over the past kind of 20 months. It's been such a huge challenge. And therefore, companies and office environments have really had to focus on benefits to their employees. And, and, and what are the keys, do we think? What, what, are, what are people asking for if they are going to return to the building? Yeah, I, th I think you're spot on, Chris, because if you look at the, the, the great resignation and attrition rates being high, that's been a huge concern. And trying to hire people has been a really difficult process. So for, for many of the employees, they're thinking of the culture and how do we bring people in? And part of that people is, is really re-looking really at your real estate and considering people, technology and spaces. How do we bring them together to create that culture and to ensure that whether you're in the office or working from anywhere else, you can deliver that equality so that people don't feel as though you go to the office, there's good equipment there, but I don't know how to use it. I was so much more comfortable from home on a Teams or Zoom call, I just pressed join, I was on. All of a sudden I'm work, walking to a meeting room and I'm trying to work out, well, I'm gonna be late for this call because I don't know how to connect. So again, that education piece and bringing together that technology with the people and understanding from a work style, what do people really want? Another part is as people come to the office, they're looking for that collaboration space, the focus rooms. So the office as it was designed in the past, is no longer fit for purpose for today. So again, rethinking through what that requirement is has been really key for employers to ensure that when people do come back to the office, they have a rich experience of what they've got at home. So people are used to having two screens, three screens, connecting quite easily. So when I go to the office, it's got to be a rich experience, better connectivity, and there's enough collaboration rooms that when I get there, I can work, socialize, and learn from people. And actually, it's effortless as well. Certainly technology is already so key to uh, working from home and hybrid working, of course, and, and to create that, that team environment. What are the key technologies? You know, of course, we've got all around the stand. We're, we're seeing Teams, we're seeing Zoom, we're seeing Google Meet. Yes. Are they still the, the key tools to that creating a team in and out of the office? Yeah, it, it's really interesting when you look at all of the technologies and, and the capabilities. So, so one thing that we found from a digital transformation perspective is everyone as they were working from home were equal. Everyone was in a little tile within the screen. You could see everyone, everyone was same shoulders, same size, no issues. As people returned to the offices and hadn't quite updated their technology, what you found is two people were working from home in a little tile box on the screen where you had six, seven people around the table. So all of a sudden, people from home felt a little bit as second class citizens. Do I join? I've got a barking dog in the background. Will it be heard? Should I avoid talking at this point? Oh, are they? 
talking about something important I can't quite hear because my audio and my headset's not quite of the right quality. So what we found during that transition is people really struggled. So in terms of the technology, what it delivers, um, all of a sudden, first of all, first and foremost, is you have technology now such as the headsets, which actually from an acoustic noise perspective, it captures only this bubble around you. So all of a sudden, if a dog's barking, no one can actually hear the dog barking. So all of a sudden you feel, you get away, away from that inferior and that thought process of being scared to talk. So all of a sudden your audio is perfect. Secondly, for those in that meeting room, what you can do is now frame them with the software and the technology to ensure that everyone is actually in a small square. So all of a sudden technology is a must in terms of delivering equality. Otherwise you have some people with better audio, some people with poor audio, some people that feel second class citizens and can't participate because they're working from home. So how do you deliver equality from those in the office and those from anywhere else is key. And I guess we talk about, we've all, you, you were saying earlier on, we've all got all of that technology at home now. We've got two, three incredible screens and we've got a fantastic desk set up. This is my home and I'm gonna make it as great as I can. And we talk about using video conferencing in the meeting room, but surely there's also a need now for the individual desk to be integrated as well, rather than stepping away from my office desk. Do I need that conferencing? Do I need that camera at my desk? So I'm, I'm there all the time, so I can have those live chats at any time of the day with those people who are working from home. Yeah, we're, we're seeing that more and more so. So in terms of the technology, so we did actually during the pandemic make investments from a, from a just not a, a office environment perspective, but from a personal environment as well. How can I deliver that personal experience as though I'm in a meeting room yeah. as yeah. such? So the technology has really taken off and what we've been able to do across the whole portfolio is take the best of certain technologies that we had and actually put it across the whole portfolio to help deliver that experience as such. Um, but I think the other part from a culture perspective is while you're in the meeting, is that etiquette of, of how you deliver that message. What's that meeting environment going to look like, even though you may be from different places and different environments and such? And you were talking about that. You guys have just done a piece on remote meeting etiquette, and there was something on, on a, a BBC piece yesterday. Is it okay to knit while I'm in the middle of a Zoom meeting, for instance? <laughs> so, so, give us some great tips. What does office etiquette, what does meeting etiquette look like these days? So, so um, Dee Brett, who had just launched um, in association with Polly, some of the etiquettes of a meeting, is things such as the way you dress, your dress code. So everyone was from home, everyone was working at home, everyone was relaxed wear. All of a sudden, people in the office, so some are in shirts, others are in tracksuits. Yeah, All yeah, of a sudden, yeah. it doesn't quite work in terms of connecting and equality. The other part is distractions. Um, once you're in a meeting, you're in a meeting, you should be engaged, absolutely. Actually, people got used to multitasking. So for, for, from an etiquette perspective, you should put the phones away, you should be focused on the screen, and it's really key that as you get the invitations from a calendar, that there's actually meeting standard, there's a clear objective of the meeting, the purpose you're there, and what's the target outcome. Because without those, you're participating, listening, thinking, should I be here? Okay, I'll join because I've always joined. Um, but the other parts is the simple things such as, when you leave, should you just hit the red button or should you actually wave? Now is well? it the wave or not? Let's, let's check this one out. <laughs> I, I think it helps. I think from a collection perspective, I think it is. Is that is, my full stop? Yeah, it is. That's my full stop. I'm now that's also my welcome as well, actually. That's where it comes to it. But I think the other part is um, you can blur the background as well in terms of virtual. So in terms of that distractions, if you've got a bookcase or, or, or you're working from your bedroom and so on, be tidy at least, yeah, so that there's less distractions. And if you want to blur your background, no issues. So everyone blurs it, again, there's that equality. So yeah, it's really important that how we conduct ourselves in the meetings um, to ensure that we deliver the best experience for everyone. What are your tips for, for getting people back in the office based on the research that you guys have done? If we're looking to get people to return from home to the office, and certainly in recruitment, where there are now so many new graduates who have come into the market who have actually never worked in a physical office before. Are there key tips that we can give to management, to recruitment, that are really going to help draw people back into the building? Yeah, I think what, what's really key first and foremost is in, to ensure that the experience of that return is rich. So going back to what I said about the technology part, um, you've got to redesign your spaces. You can go through um, personas to better understand your employees and what they're likely to do once they're in the office. And then that redesign of the office space should incorporate whether you should have more focus rooms, collaboration rooms, learning rooms, as such. So if you can get that piece right in the balance, it means that when people are in the office, 
there's the right spaces for them to conduct themselves in. So that's first of all, get those spaces right. Within those spaces, it goes back to the technology on the equipment of, is it easy to use? Is it fit for purpose as such? Um, we're quite fortunate from a poly HP perspective that, that our breadth of portfolio actually accommodates different work styles. So if you're somebody with long hair, not myself, of course, but somebody with long hair that likes to have a discreet headset, that's available. On the other hand, if you want a different type of setup, we've got that in abundance. So again, the portfolio breadth is key to ensure that workers both individually have the right um, equipment and technology, um, and secondly, those that attend the office have the right room set up with the right spaces to be able to attend the meetings effortlessly so that actually it works, it collaborates. And I think part of that process has got to be the learning. I think it's got to be the themes. Everyone's got to be celebrating small wins yeah, yeah. as such. So again, from a social perspective, you've got a social networking opportunity, posting it, using social media, getting other people to from home who don't often come to the office thinking, I wish I went, that, that seems yeah, yeah. like a good yeah, day. So, so you go back to how universities encourage people with a freshest week, how you get people back into the groove and the motion of actually um, coming back to the office. People do want to be out of the house. Clearly, some of the best way to get them into the office is to make it a tempting environment. Show them what they're missing, as you say, Sof. More great tips from How To AV coming your way soon. Sof, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Join us again soon at howtoav.tv.